Hey, what's up? So this is Rashmika, uh, bringing you the exercise on invertible functions from the book A Class Book of Mathematics by Essen. So here is the question number two from page number eighteen. So the question is prove that f is a function from r to r such that f of x is defined as f of x equal four x minus five is invertible and find f inverse of x. So we need to prove this function f is invertible and also find f inverse of x. We are given f of x equal four x minus five. In the definition of invertible functions, we have already discussed that to show invertible of a function, first of all, we need to uh, find another function z from this to this. Then uh, we need to show that their composite functions are identity map. Then only we can say that this function have has any invertible inverse functions, so that we can say that this function f is invertible. So first of all, since f of x equal 4x minus 5, and we can write f of x equal y, such that y is the image of x since f is just function from r to r. Now, we express this x in terms of y. 4x equal y plus 5 then x will be equal to y plus 5 divided by 4 so this is the first step since f of x equal 4x minus 5 we got x equal y plus 5 by 4 now can i write x as z of y obviously we can write x as z of y since the expression x contains y only, x equal y plus 5 by 4. That means this is a function in y. So the function we take here, this is as z. So z of y equal y plus 5 by 4. So uh, step 1 is done. Now for the second step, we need to show that composite function of z and f. That means z not f equal ir and f not z equal ir we need to show that to show z not f equal an identity map and f not z also is an identity map now for an element x z not f of x will be by definition of composite function it will be z of fx And f of x, uh, it is given here 4x minus 5. So, z of 4x minus 5. Again, we have defined already that z of y equal y plus 5 by 4. So, z of this quantity will be equal to this quantity plus 5 divided by 4. Therefore, according to the definition of z, it will be 4x minus 5 plus 5 divided by 4 so if we simplify this we will get x only because first of all minus 5 plus 5 cancels out then remaining is 4x divided by 4 again 4 and 4 cancels out we get x only since z not f of x is nothing but the element x itself therefore we can write Z not f is an identity map which I can denote here I R. So C not f equal I R. Right? Again, if we take an element y in form f not c of y, then by definition this will be f of c of y. And z of y, it is given here, f of 
y plus 5 by 4. Since f of x is equal 4x plus 5, four, sorry, 4x minus 5, therefore we can replace it here. 4y plus 5 by 4 minus 5 by definition of f of x. Now this 4 and 4 cancels out. Okay. Y plus 5 minus 5. Again, it will be Y only. Since F naught Z of Y is nothing but the element itself, therefore F naught Z is also an identity map. Therefore, F naught Z equal IR. Since we have got Z naught F equal IR and F naught Z equal IR, therefore we can directly say that this Z of Y is the inverse of this function f. So from this we can say that the function f is invertible by definition of an invertible function. Therefore f is an invertible function. Again by definition of invertible function the inverse of this function is nothing but the another function z because already we have proved these two things. So we can Directly say that this z is the inverse of this function f. Therefore, inverse of f is f inverse will be what? z of y and z of y equal y plus. So f inverse equals z of y and z of y goes from r to r. But we are to find f inverse of x, that means the inverse of an element. So, inverse of an element will be this. So, this is done. So, here the inverse function goes from r to r and it is defined as z of y equal y plus 5 by 4. Or this z of y, you can write it also f inverse of x equal y plus 5 by 4. So this is proof. So our second question is question number 5 from the exercise of invertible functions from the book A class book of mathematics. Let a equal abc and b equal 1 to 3 b to 6. Let us take f is a function from a to b. Then, if f equal a1, b2, and c3, and number 2, f equal a2, b1, and c1, then we need to check whether the inverse of this f exists or not. Whatever exists in the two cases, we need to find the inverse also. So, we are given two cases. In the first case, f contains these elements and in the second one, f contains these elements. So, we need to check whether these functions have inverse or not. So, we have a theorem, theorem 1. Theorem 1 on invertible functions that if the function n they are inverse the composite of two functions f and z. If the composite of two functions will be identity map, then we can say that these two functions are 1, 1 and 1, 2, or we can say these uh, two functions are bisective. So that was the theorem 1, what we have already discussed. So we will apply it here. Now we are given f equal a1, b2, and c3. So we can say this f is invertible if we can show that this function is bisective. If we can show f is 1, 1 as well as 1, 2, then we can directly conclude that f is an invertible function. So let's check whether f is 1 1 or not. For that, we have already discussed uh, 1 1 and onto functions. 
in the very beginning. So, to know about one on and on to functions, uh, please go through the link which I will be given in the description box. So, here f is a function from a to b. A contains a, b, c, and b contains 1, 2, and 3. And in the question, as is defined as a is related to 1, that means 1 is the image of a, b is the pre image of 2, and 3 is the image of c. So, from the figure, it is very clear that the elements in the set A have distinct images in the set B. So, this is an one on function. So, clearly, F is an one one function. Now, to check whether it is on to or not. Here, the set B contains 1, 2, and 3. If we have three images of all these three elements, 1, 2, and 3, in the set A, and no element is left unrelated, so that we can say that this function is on. So here, 1 is the image of A, 1 has the pre image A, 2 has the pre image B, and 3 has the pre image C. So these three elements have different pre images in the set A and all these three are related. Therefore, we can say this function f is also on to function. Since the function f is both 1 1 as well as on to, therefore we can write f is bisective. And whenever f is a is, an, is a bijective map, then we can say that this function f is an invertible function. So, from the theorem 1, so f is an invertible function. Again, in the definition, we have already uh, discussed that whenever f is an invertible function, its inverse goes from goes from b to a because in the inverse co-domain and domain and co-domain are intersect. So f inverse will go from what? f inverse go from b to a. That means the diagram will be like f inverse goes from b to a. The elements in b 1, 2, 3 and a a, b, c. So one is the premise of A, two is the premise of B, and three is the premise of C. So the first one, whenever f equal a one, b two, and c three, we can say that this function is invertible and this function have an inverse. So the inverse is f inverse goes from B to A, and defined as. And defined as f inverse equal one a two b and three c. So this is done. The first one is done. For the second one, whenever f equal a two b one and c one, we will check whether this function f is 1 1 or not and on to or not so for question number 2 we are given f equal a to b1 and c1 if we draw the figure it will be very clear so i prefer this method f is a function from a to b a contains A, B, C and B contains 1, 2 and 3, right? Here A has images, A has image 2 in set B. A has image 2 and B has image 1 and also C has image 
1. Now from the figure, the elements A, B and C in A have images in B, but two elements A and C, sorry, two elements B and C have image, the same image in C, B. That means these elements have not distinct images in the C, B. So uh, from 1 to and 1 to mapping and many one mapping, I have already uh, discussed in previous videos. So I have told that whenever two elements have the same image in the second set, then it will not be a one one map. So this is many one. So F is not one one. So we I need not to show whether f is on or not because to be an bijective map, to be a bijective map, f should be both 1 1 as well as 1 2. Though uh, I will show it here whether f is on or not. Here the elements 1 and 2 have pre images in CD, but 3 has no pre images in the first set. So B, f is not on 2. F is not on to also. Since F is not on one as well as not on to, therefore F cannot be an bijective map. Since F is not a bijective map, therefore f is not invertible therefore f does not have any inverse so directly i can say f does not have any inverse since f is not invertible so the question number two is done so in this question, the question 1, when f is defined as a1, b2, and c3, then we will have an inverse of this function f. But whenever this f is defined as a2, b1, and c1, we cannot get inverse of this function. I hope you are understanding. So this question is done. So today's video is all about this. I hope this is very clear to you. Uh, if you have any queries, then please do write in the comment section. And thank you for watching this video.